So let's summarize unit four, which was the first of two units on bifurcations. I began by looking at the logistic differential equation. So it looks very similar on the right-hand side to the logistic equation that we iterated, but this is a differential equation. As before, it's a very simple model of population growth where there's some limit to growth. The quantity R is the growth parameter. K is known as the carrying capacity. And the reason for that is that we saw that there was a stable equilibrium at P equals K. So that's the equilibrium value um, to which the population will, will be attracted. So there's a stable equilibrium or an attractor at K and an unstable equilibrium or a repeller at uh, P equals zero. So then I compared and contrasted um, differential equations, that's described here, and iterated functions. So for iterated functions, that's what we worked on in unit three mostly, time moves in jumps and the population moves in jumps. The population might jump from 0.6 to 0.8 without going through any of the in-between values. For the differential equations of this chapter, or, or unit, um, time is continuous, and p, the population, is continuous. So if I know that um, one year the population was 80 and another year it was 100, that it had to have gone through all intermediate values, all values between 80 and 100. So this fact of continuity together with determinism means that cycles, and hence chaos, are not possible for one-dimensional differential equations of this sort. And again, this is due to determinism, because for a given p, a given population value, the population can have only one derivative, only one rate of change. So it can't um, cycle around, go up and down for the same p-value. It has to either go up or down. And so p can only increase to a fixed point, decrease to a fixed point, or tend towards plus or minus infinity. So the range of behaviors we can see here is um, a little dull in the sense that we don't see chaos or even cycles. For the iterated functions that we've studied in um, unit one and unit three, cycles and chaos are possible. And I should mention that um, both the differential equation and the iterated function are sometimes called the uh, logistic equation. Um, but the iterated version of it is often called the logistic map. And the picture here is that the function maps the unit interval to the other, uh, to the unit interval. It maps the unit interval to itself. So it's a sort of technical sense of the word mapping. But anyway, if you hear the term logistic map, it's almost surely an iterated function. If you just hear the term logistic equation, it could be this or that. Usually it'll be clear from the context which is which. So then we looked at modification of the logistic differential equation. I added a harvest term h. So the population is growing, doing its own thing, but every year we subtract h fish from the population, so h for harvest. And we ask, well, what happens for different values of h? So here's one of the first examples we did. If h is 40, then the uh, this parabola shifts down, and so the fixed points that used to be here move in. And here's the phase line for that situation. We have a stable fixed point at 84, an unstable fixed point around 16. So we asked, what happens for different values of h? And we took a couple of snapshots. We did h equals 40, h equals 60, h equals 20, um, h equals 80, I forget the exact values, but we experimented with a half dozen or so different h values. And for each experiment that we did, drew a phase line, and then we combined all those phase lines and others into this construction called the bifurcation diagram. So here's a bifurcation diagram for um, a, a possible that would have the general shape that we would expect for the logistic equation. So we took the phase lines and um, for different parameter values and we sort of glued them together. And so on a bifurcation diagram, the parameter is changing this way. And on the vertical axis where each sort of slice gives us a phase line. So um, 
these are a little bit abstract. It can take a little bit uh, of practice to get used to interpreting them. But the key is to remember that a bifurcation diagram is just a lot of phase lines glued or stacked together. So if we wanted to know, say, what was going on for a little bit above 100 for this case, I would try to just focus in right on that vertical slice. And I would see that there's a stable fixed point here and an unstable fixed point here. So um, bifurcation diagrams show how the fixed points of a dynamical system change as a parameter is varied. And as this parameter is varied, we could have changes where a fixed point changes its stability, or we could have something where a fixed point disappears altogether. And that's the case here. So bifurcation diagrams, a very common uh, graphical tool used in the analysis of dynamical systems. When one presents an analysis of a model, often one sort of summarizes that with a bifurcation diagram. So they're a very useful geometric tool. And we'll revisit these in the next unit when we'll look at bifurcation diagrams for the uh, iterated function systems, the um, logistic equation iterated. So then we turn from bifurcation diagrams to bifurcations themselves. So a bifurcation is a sudden qualitative change in the behavior of a dynamical system as a parameter is varied. And what I mean by a qualitative change is a change in the number of fixed points and or a change in their stability. So here we have a bifurcation on this diagram, like around 200. And so if we're above 200, then we have no fixed points. If we're below 200, we would have two fixed points, one stable, one unstable. So um, the moral of the story is that sometimes properties of continuous models are discontinuous. So let me explain what I mean by that, um, just to review. If I'm up here and I increase h, a small change in h leads to a small change in the value of this um, equilibrium, this attractor. If I'm here and I do a little change in h, um, a small change in h gives rise to a small change in the equilibrium value. If I'm here, however, and I do a small change in h, I increase h a little bit, so fall off, and this, this attractor disappears and the population would suddenly crash. There's not a, any stable populations between these two values. So there's a gap, and if you, if you move this way, there'd be a jump. So most of the time, a small change in your model leads to a small change in the behavior, but sometimes it can lead to a sudden jump. So that's an important realization. That's, I think, the most important realization um, from this chapter, that uh, continuous models will behave differential equations can sometimes have these sorts of jumps in them. So lastly, I mentioned briefly, and I'll do so again, that there's a nice classification of bifurcations into several different types. This is a little bit beyond the scope of what I want to do in this course. Um, but if you want to dig deeper, um, the reference I would recommend the most would be chapter three of Strogatz's book. This is a, I mean, his, his entire book is great, and this chapter is really nice. It's um, just sort of like one or two notches more mathematical than what we're doing in this course. Um, Scholarpedia, the URL is here, has a pretty good uh, set of pages on bifurcations. Wikipedia's set of pages are, are pretty good as well. I think Scholarpedia's might be a little bit more readable. And this is a standard topic. So most texts on dynamical systems uh, or, or uh, differential equations, a modern differential equations book, would have some discussion of bifurcations in them. So there are lots of other places that you can go um, if you want to dig deeper into this um, phenomena of bifurcations and bifurcation diagrams. So this brings us to the end of Unit 4. In the next unit, we'll continue learning about bifurcation diagrams, and we'll be in for some fun surprises when we look at the bifurcation diagram for the iterated logistic equation. See you next week.